I really don't think they needed to impress me more so than what episode 1 delivered, but seeing the escalation of the tactics of this prince, how far he'll actually go to protect the one that he loves, and anyone who disrespects someone like Nim is going to get a sword through the chest. I mean, that is an aspect of his character that definitely separates from a lot of shows that have aired recently that have a similar setting with a similar idea. Because the idea of killing, especially in a wartime period where literally soldiers are dying left and right, the fact that we have a prince like Wayne who's not afraid to kill, especially if someone pisses him off to the point of being like, hey, you know, the person next to you, your right-hand woman, who you clearly care for more than probably above all others or very close to him, and you have some lapdog of a general talking about how you should get rid of this disgusting mutt, and then you go and invade and slice and dice him as they casually reveal that he is the top scoring student in every grade and department from military tactics to book smarts, and it's painting a very clear picture on why this genius prince is as skillful as he is. It's not necessarily that everyone that he's going up against are idiots. In probably a general battle, what was seen by, I think his name was Logan or something like that, most likely would have worked out, but when you're going up against someone who is the best of the best, even though he's completely disinterested and really just wanted to sell you this mind to begin with, you go from having a worthless mind to wanting to sell said worthless mind to killing the side you were going to make peace with, and now you're basically in the thick of war even more so. This show's awesome. I love how it's actually been so war-driven because... One of my favorite things about any sort of fantasy movie, fantasy book, is when they're in the thick of the war, when you see the generals planning their troops, where should so-and-so squad go, and then sometimes you get those like, okay, we're going to have this mini kind of soldier group that's going to go around from the back, and if they can break their formation, we can open up the gate. Stuff like that's really fun, and to see the heroes of the story, or at least the protagonists of the story, basically hold up on a mountain as, yeah, they can only, you know, they have 30,000 men, we have 5,000 men. Of course, the numbers alone, we can't win, this is too ridiculous, but we have the train on our side. They can only send a select amount of people through each path, and the fact that they use such an interesting decoy method of basically digging a kind of like identical tunnel that was already behind it so that when you kind of lead the trap and you bury people alive, you know, it's kind of brutal, but they did that, they immediately forget that there could be more there. They just assume that, okay, they had one trick up their sleeve, their one escape route, it's gone now. They gone us, we admit that pisses us off, but they can't escape now. And you don't even think for it to cross your mind that they might have dug others when you weren't looking. And the fact that, you know, the escalation of this episode was just even better than the first because it was just all out like one wrong move and the prince would have had his head cut off. Like it wouldn't have even been an ifs, ands, or buts. But I love the idea that you go from after last week, even talking with people in the comments, I mean, the whole point of him was his kingdom has nothing of value, like literally they have nothing of worth. So the idea of getting a gold mine basically makes them wealthy and that would put them into the thick of success, which is the last thing he wants. He wants to lose, but have it look like he tried. So to kick the episode off and to learn that the mines are pretty much dry, there's not much there. So you're going to try to sell it back to the people, but obviously it's not going to be an easy like, hey, we just took it, do you want it back? No, you have to put up a fight, demoralize them, and then try to sell it back as a sort of peace treaty. So I thought it was so great to see how that they were just being smart. I think at one point, I think it's like two weeks after the battle started, we're getting like a report from Nim and she's saying like, yeah, we got food, we're down supplies, but morale's good. Everything is fine for them. Despite clearly losing some lives here or there, like they are holding their own. So everything was falling into place. And then when you see like the right hand man of this general and just how much of a prick he is, you knew the treaty was not going to happen because when someone's saying, like, give us everything, like, my boy, even though you have the numbers to crush them, and theoretically you could argue if you continue doing what you're doing, maybe eventually you might have been able to break through, there is no way after weeks upon weeks of getting your ass pushed back that you can literally face-to-face -face say, give us everything, and hell, I'm surprised it didn't even ask for the prince's head while he was at it. But when he disrespected someone he cared about, I think this really separates his character from others, because had this been a normal situation of, like, a prince who wants to rule, cares about the people, to the point of, like, you know, he would give his life for others, 
No, he's a prince who, like, he will put on an act. He'll make it seem like he's trying his best to win, but he wants to lose so bad, but keep his life intact because he wants to be a lazy prince. And someone like that very much would put the life of one person above what he should do in a situation. Logically, should he have gone to the front lines? No, because if he dies, obviously, you know, what's who's going to take his place? No one's as clever as him. But when you disrespect someone who clearly means so much to him, and the fact that he made it his mission to come on the battlefield, and not just come and rub it in the face of how we beat you, the fact that he killed him, that was the icing on the cake for me. He's not an edgy character, he's not some edgelord, he's just someone who knows what he wants in life, and, you know, because he's tasked at being the leader, sometimes he's going to take matters into his own hands, and holy shit, that was impressive. I mean, they kicked the episode off so goofy, like, you know, you have Nim talking about, oh, I wonder if he's dreaming of me, and then he's talking about big boobs, and then she realizes, well, shit, that can't be me because I don't have those, and then he gets a slap to the face, to then ending with literally him killing for her, and I'm like... Didn't see that coming. Like, the 3D objects and how they kind of, like, used almost like a chessboard formation where they have, like, a 3D world and they're showing all the kind of characters moving up. I actually like that detail because it kind of, because really, what can you do in that situation if you have 30,000 men? Are we going to have, like, a duplicate crappy CGI character model or should we have, like, a little chess piece almost like it's a chessboard and seeing the two sides almost, like, move their pawns and stuff around? And I really like that type of stuff, but just... Seeing another battle, I mean, this is battle with meat to it. There's actually substance to its writing. There's strategy, and for the most part, you don't see characters slashing and killing people, but rather you see the the leaders make their moves and their plans, and to me, this is some of the most exhilarating kind of battle formations I've seen in quite some time because it actually feels intelligently written. I mean, I do want to make a mention of this. I really don't care if other channels don't like this show or don't like shows I'm covering. I got a lot of comments last week being like, so-and-so creator doesn't like this and said it's trash. I don't care. I asked for, like, you know, the subscribers or the people watching the videos of what you guys think. And, I mean, really, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I think most people, you know, they make outrage clickbait because that's how they get their views. I care about, you know, talking about the stuff I enjoy. I could care less about channels who, you know, are saying, oh, this is a trash show. They're entitled to their opinion, even though I don't agree with it. So please try to, like, keep that away if, like, channels are, like, talking shit about a show that I'm covering because, really, I don't care. I just want to make a mention because... It wasn't like it was one or two. I got like a dozen people being like, what do you think of so-and-so saying this show's trash? I really don't care. I like the show, clearly. I just gushed about it for a bunch of minutes here. So let's just keep it to what you feel about a show. If you hate it, perfectly fine. Tell me why, but I don't care about other channels about what they say. Just want to throw that out there because it seems like this might be a show that apparently is going to get some of those comments, which I never would have expected after episode one because I thought it was so good, and I think episode two is even better, but... Just wanted to throw that out there. But let me know what you feel, though, down below, whether you loved it or you hate it. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.